Okay, guys, welcome back to the channel. So with our little break, our little hiatus from uh, producing content, we've not really had a chance to talk about Matt Fitzpatrick's win at the Country Club of Brookline, but we're going to dive into a little bit of that today. One of the shots that was, was pretty key to him winning, obviously, you know, what was spoken about a lot was his driving. The bunker shot at 18 is, is going to go down as one of the great clutch shots to win a major championship. But one of the things that I think caught a lot of people's attention has been is his chipping technique. Yeah, his I don't think before that technique. tournament, people had noticed that he was even doing it. Little it was bit the first time I there. heard kind of a buzz about it. Definitely. Fitzpatrick has always had this reputation for being a bit of a short game wizard. He's unbelievable with the putting. Um, he is one of the best sort of instructors from, from a, a bunker play perspective. Uh, and Pete Cowan, or certainly was before he worked with Mike Walker. Uh, but the chipping is something that he's always felt was a little bit of a weakness. And, you know, as someone who really is, is looking at every small detail, I mean, it came out fairly recently that he's recorded every single shot that he's hit since he was 12 years old. He's been doing work behind the scenes with Sasha McKenzie on the biomechanics with the stack system, trying to get longer, trying to kind of become an elite player from a distance and putting perspective. Yeah. He's been doing great work with the stack system, really improving his speed. He was a kind of a 168, 169 ball speed guy at best. But there is a, there is a jump in, in sort of performance, elite level performance, when you can be a 180, maybe slightly more than. And he had that... I think people were shocked when he was paired with DJ to see him a couple of times, you know, hit it past DJ. And he's a pretty slight guy, but he can definitely get out there now. But the, the chipping is definitely something that, that, you know, we have talked about, we have noticed. And we're going to dive into a little bit around the mechanics of that today and, and what has that helped him with? And, and maybe why should people start thinking about a different way to chip if it's not already a strong suit in their game? Yeah, and even as a chip and or just like a drill for full speed or swing, because that's where I started doing it, because mm -hmm. um, it kind of helped me with some things for my actual full swing as well, from chipping cross. Totally. So. so let's start with this. Let's start with what do we see people do when, when you play uh, with golfers, um, you know, when you teach golfers, what do you see as, as bad technique? So, uh, like the scooping and like bring it from the inside and kind of trying to get it up in the air mm -hmm. um, would be the most common one that I see. Right. A lot of people are just kind of, um, they're always trying to help it up so yeah. the club gets underneath and then they just chunk it or fin it or kind of bring in, brings in a lot of variables of the miss hits. Definitely. Okay, show us a couple like that. Okay, so some D-cell. Yeah, D-cell, a little inside. That was obviously over-exaggerated, yeah. but um, kind of let go of the angles mm -hmm. through the shot scoop it, try to help it up in the air. I know um, for me, I teach a lot of, or was teaching a lot of righties that are um, right hand dominant, so that mm -hmm. bottom hand would tend to get active, yeah. which um, that's kind of what I was trying to show there, inside flippy, totally. um, and that's why the contact gets a little bit Okay, off. let's do a couple more just like that. Let's see a couple of kind of good strikes, but we, we know that the technique is borderline a little dangerous. That was nicely played. That was, that was, you know, that was the one we, we say is borderline dangerous, right? So let's hit a couple more, just like that. Exactly. Little strike behind it. Okay. And then let's take the opposite of that. Let's take the player who's been taught by someone who's is maybe, you know, singing to the hymn tune of the PGA manual. Get the weight in the lead side. Get the, get the handle forward. Hit down on it. I see that as being something that, that plagues a lot of golfers when it comes to at their action around the green. And, and really what, what it is that we're talking about here, whether you're somebody who's, you know, puts the ball forward and scoops, whether you're somebody who leans into, the, you know, the lead side too much with the handle forward and hits down, we're talking about control and low point, yeah. right? That's really what we're talking about here. So hit a couple like that for me. Let's, let's show the audience the, the difference on those. I'm going to move that green back a little. We'll give you more space, maybe 30 yards. Okay, maybe a little bit more of a, dr a driven, more down pitch there. Though that was that was that was definitely like a lower flight, more driven. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Okay, get, show me a couple more just like that. Again, weight forward, yeah, ball so that's, back. That's a lot of forward press, hands yeah. kind of up by my front thigh. Oops. Yeah. So what what we can get, and, and that was a perfect example there of of what Matt got was uh, a. 
big jump in ball speed, right? Inconsistent uh, ball speed, leaving the club face, very hard to pick your landing spot when you really don't know how fast the ball's gonna come off the face. We're, uh, we're pushing that angle of attack down even more. When you push the angle of attack down like that, the low point, you know, where the, the part or the part where the, the club bottoms out is so far out in front of the golf ball, you're never going to have good strike control, you're never going to have good launch characteristics, and you're certainly never going to have good speed. So you're not going to do anything that leads to consistency of being able to land the ball in the same spot and understand the release of the, of the golf ball. So what Matt has talked about with the cross-handed chipping is that it's really helped him become a consistent chipper. He knows exactly what the ball is going to do and, and how it's basically going to release uh, towards the hole. So let's, let's see a couple where you go, in your case, uh, right hand low, yeah. and, and let's see how you control low point with that lead, lead arm. <laughs> that would have been a nice way to start it. Very nice. Very, very nice. Okay, guys, so the really what I want, I want you to pay attention to as we go along here is the launch spin, angle attack, and dynamic loft, right? Those are the, the main things. If we can keep club head speed and ball speed at about a one-to-one -one ratio, that's when we see efficiency around 1.00. That would be kind of what I would be looking for in an ideal uh, world here. So let's, let's see a few more just like that. Did you feel the hands flick at it a touch there? I flicked a little bit, I Just think. a little bit. Okay, so actually... It still wasn't bad, yeah. It wasn't was, too bad. It was still down. I think I, I probably could have felt a little bit more of my body turning. Right. Rather than my arms kind of... Very nice. I mean, I know the first one hit the flag. That one looked to me like... Yeah, that was a little... Nice kinda... flight, great sound. Okay, all those things that we're talking about there terms of the, the efficiency. Launch came down and, and spin was 4,600. Let's see where that is relative to what we've been seeing. Pretty similar. Touch higher, baby. Nice, Mac. Really nice. Just ideal little pitch and run. We've talked about this in the channel a lot when we see good pitchers. Luke Donald's a great pitcher of the golf ball. One of the things he's always talked about is why he holds more than his fair share of chipping, uh, chip shots is because he gets the ball running at the hole like a putt. You can see on, on that one there, if we replay that, once Mac got it on the green, it rolled out like a putt. It was a dead weight putt as it got there. So it's not something that, it's not a shot that relied on spin to stop it. One of those variables that is, is you know, we know is inconsistent. We love to see pitches that run at the hole like putts. That was excellent. Okay, let's see one more. Absolutely love. Those last two, to me, were, were excellent. Yeah, the big thing I feel with it is like, it's for cross-handed, I'm finding it a lot easier to maintain this angle. Yes. Without Absolutely. this happening, because yep. this wrist naturally, for me anyways, doesn't want to go that way that and way. flip it. Yep. So it kind of eliminates that. There's still going to be a little bit of a scoop. Obviously, it takes a little bit of practice. Mm -hmm. But for me, I'm finding it a lot easier to maintain this angle and just feel like my my whole body's kind of squaring the face up instead of me having to work Definitely. to do it. When it comes to the, the numbers and, and what we're seeing and why we think this is a very valid, very interesting. Uh, technique to use for pitching. Look how consistent your launch has become. Um, you know, the first one you hit a little firmer, but even after that, the ball speed, you started to get some real consistency about what you were doing. If we look at angle of attack, I mean, when we were showing the different shots before, whether you were scooping, whether you were weight forward and leaning the shaft, the massive levels of variance. Ideal just to have the angle of attack about four degrees down get that strike just slightly out in front. You want that ball first contact, but you certainly don't want it to be seven, eight inches out in front. That's gonna to lead to the strike being too low on the right. bottom of the face. We're gonna thin our fair share, we're gonna get a bit flinchy with it. And also we're getting a real nice level of consistency on the dynamic loft. We, we spoke about that at the start. We're looking for consistency in the efficiency and the speed, angle of attack, we're looking for the loft and obviously the, the, the way the ball releases once it gets to the green. That's what we're looking for Definitely. with this. Um, so I, Matt uses it mostly for around the, the greens. There was one shot in particular. He was about, 
I think it was about 60 or 70 yards out from the, the, fly, uh, the green uh, at Brookline. And he was kind of like, he was stuck in between two actions. His old action where he'd be right hand low and this new action. And he said he had a battle in his own mind that which one does he go right. for? Because it was on the cusp of being a little bit too far out. And he went with the cross-handed version. And he said, you know, I, 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 I do this in practice all the time. Why not trust that he yeah, out? And he hit a lovely shot. Made, you know, I think he made birdie go up and down. So let's, let's see if anything changes when we go back a little bit more. Okay, so we're kind of going to push it back towards like about 40, just shy of 50 yards. Great strike. I hit that great. Really too. good strike. Okay. I need to dial it down a little bit, but. We go back to what we were talking about. There's, there's real consistency to what Mac is doing here. Angle of attack, dynamic loft, efficiency, leading to consistency on launch angle, spin rate. Very easy to start to predict what your golf ball is going to do when you do the same thing all the time. If we breed consistency in ourselves, we will breed consistency in our results, uh, which is what we're kind of seeing from this, this action. I really like this. Yeah, and, yeah, and this is something that I use not just for pitching. Um, because I hit so many big hooks, mm -hmm. my tendency is to get under it and super into out, right. and then I get stuck. So mm -hmm. just by feeling more lead side dominant yep. um, and really just feeling like my body's rotating, my elbow stays in front of my, my body here. Yeah, yeah. I don't get stuck as much and I feel like it's easier for me to neutralize my path, easier for me to neutralize my attack angle and kind of just get everything more consistent like you said. So it's a drill I use not only just for chipping but I will hit a full swing yeah. from like 100 yards with a sand wedge just to get that feeling of mm -hmm. um, similar to what we're doing with the chipping but Definitely. as a drill as well. Love that. These are really high quality little pitches. They really are. See that strike point moving in, lovely. You, you've got you've got control of that uh, that low point so nicely. Right yeah, now. that that's an important one for me with pitching because I know I get a little bit down on it. Yeah. I'm guilty of a little bit too much forward press, a little bit trying not using the bounce of the club enough, and really yeah. trying to like almost compress my chips instead mm -hmm. of just letting the bounce of the club work itself and having that repeatable move. Definitely. I think, guys, when you go to watch the best players in the world or players of a high level like Mac who do this, one of the things you'll notice is they can kind of pitch from the same spot for probably 10 or 12, 15 shots and really not have to move the ball because they're taking big divots. That's because of technique like this. When you're 10, 9, 14 degrees you know, down or up, you're going to be taking turf. You're going to be hitting behind it in front of it. You're just going to be you know, horribly inconsistent. When you have such great control of low point like this, you'll be able to just bruise the turf on your way by. People talk about using the bounce and, and trying to uh, use the, the sole of the club as designed. That's exactly what's going on here. You can hear that ball being clipped away. You can hear the, the sort of brushing of the sole against the turf, but you're not really interfering with it or getting the club stuck in it to the point where you're going to get inconsistent results. Yeah, totally. And I think the good thing about it is it's easy to comp, like for me to do just by setting up like that, feeling my body rotates, mm -hmm. and it kind of does it for you as long as you maintain those angles. And Love I think it. that's why I really like it is just because it almost does it for you just by proper setup. Definitely. So really, guys, what I think people thought was risky, uh, Matt Fitzpatrick's trying something new. You know, he must be really struggling. It's kind of the opposite. He's de-risking the shot by going with a technique that he knows allows him to be more consistent with his delivery and produce a much more consistent result, which at the end of the day under pressure is exactly what we're all looking to do, whatever that pressure may be or wherever it may come from, whether it's shooting your low score, whether it's trying to win a US Open, whatever it might be. Everyone feels pressure from time to time, whether it's match play or one up, one down play in the last, and you've got to get it up and down. You're going to want to rely on your technique to see you through. Inconsistent low point will lead to poor technique, poor results, inconsistencies. I really think you should give this a try. Take a look at it, get out in the short game area, maybe take some balls and, and go and see if it works for you. I think what you might find is it's a little bit easier to do than what it looks like on TV, you know, with, with Matt. It looks a bit awkward at first, but, you know, I think it's a little bit easier than people would imagine. Yeah, I'd say start small, little like basic 10-yard chip shot and kind of gain speed as you get more comfortable with it. Um, 
but you'll be surprised how easy it is to, to make it feel quite natural. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay, um, guys, success leaves clues. Matt's, Matt Fitzpatrick is now one of the best golfers in the world. We need to be looking at what these players are doing you know, their, their quest for being the best players that they can lead us and, and help us understand some of the things that maybe we haven't thought about. So hopefully this is something that if you've been struggling with your chipping, maybe you can transform that with, uh, with a cross-handed technique. Definitely give it a go. Let us know how it goes. Stay tuned for more. We'll see you again soon.